Katie Dishman. I am a family recruitment specialist with Children's Home Society. Um, and I wanna welcome you all today to Family Talks. Um, this is a series where we will get to hear from um, some of our families and staff about their journeys through foster care um, and adoption. So not only will we be talking to each other um, tonight, but we also ask you guys to join in the conversation. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free um, to stick those in the chat box and we'll have some of our recruiters um, here live answering those questions for you guys. So I know many families, you know, if you're watching this, you've probably thought about foster care um, or adoption. So you probably have a lot of questions um, and maybe a lot of them have been unanswered. So our goal tonight is to hopefully answer some of those questions for you. Um, and we're gonna talk with a family who has taken that first step in becoming a licensed foster care and adoptive family. So I'd like to introduce you all to Donna McGuire. Um, she is one of our families here at Children's Home Society. So hi, Donna, how are you? Great, hope everybody else is well. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm so excited to talk to you and hear a little bit about your story. Um, so I guess we'll jump right in. If you wanna just tell us a little bit about yourself and um, kind of how you got to this point in, in foster care and adoption. It really started a long time ago after my kids got out of college. Um, you know, I, there was a t period of time there were me and my husband, you know, we traveled a little bit and um you know just just me and him just had fun but then he he became handicapped and um even before he became handicapped i asked i saw this kid's story in a newspaper i guess i didn't say that and it really tugged at my heart it really did and i said tim i want this little boy and that's how it began but then it took me a few more years when tim became disabled and he couldn't go with me anymore and i got lonely but he was well enough to um i asked him to please go to classes with me because i said i'm lonely i go everywhere by myself and and i i, I need somebody in my life you know and so he agreed and we went to classes and then um i was License for one, and when they called me, there were two. So they redid my license because they were sisters, and they had been separated for six months, and and I had to go buy bunk beds, and I had to get all these, you know, double this, double that, and so um, I got all that together, and I said, I want them, I'll take them, and they've been the biggest blessing in my life. They're my running buddies. They're my partners in crime. Uh, I knew when I got them that they were meant to be with me. And so I have all my adoption papers ready. We're just waiting on the court to say yes, because they're behind with COVID and we're gonna sign on the dotted line and they're gonna be belonging to us, but still have um, things to do with their mom and Nana um, for the rest of their life. I told them, I said, I'll never take them, I'll never keep you separated from them because they love them. It's still their mother, it's still their Nana. And and they uh, agree, we've already had the adoption talk. They're happy to be here with us and still see their mama and Nana. When you're going through class and, and you're you're doing that little bit of part about shared parenting, a lot of people like, well, they give their kids up, they lost their kids, so da da da, you know. Um, I don't know if I want anything to do with them. I can't believe you would let them go into fostering. Those are the kinds of things that run through your mind. But their mother is not mean. She has some issues. She's young. She loves them. She just did not want to raise them. And financially, she couldn't. It is important, I think, to your foster kids if they... Listen, the bottom line is they still love their mama. They still love their daddy, no matter what's happened. 
So I gave, you know, I gave them a chance. I, you know, I did have a few little power struggles with, and sometimes a little, and I have called them. And the Nana and Mama have come over here to speak to them, you know. It's still their Nana, still their Mama. They come over and they talk to these girls. If I just can't get a handle on what's going on, that hasn't been much. I promise it hasn't. But, but there's been a couple times that I have called and they've come. And I think that's great. Uh, their mom loves them. But through, do it, through DSS and, and going there for a year or almost a year and a half every week and seeing them, you, you learn each other. I care about their mother. I, I do care as, uh, as a person. I care about her. So it was decided, DSS, I finally asked, can they come to my house and I will supervise the visits because they were both doing well. And so that's what we've been doing. They come here. They've seen where the kids live. Um, nice house. Clean clothes, shoes, whatever. My, I, I've spoiled my girls. I'll tell you, I have. Um, and so their mom and Nana are very happy for them to be here with me. And they're on board with the adoption. And I've also talked to the girls about adoption. Uh, you know, as long as they can have something to do with Nana and, and the mama, they're more than happy to be adopted by Tim and I. And that's what we're going to do. It sounds like shared parenting has been a huge part of your foster care and adoption journey that it's it's played a huge role. yes i mean you you know you just you get to know them as people i you know people have problems I, they just do um but you got to give them a chance people deserve chances their mama deserves a chance their nana that they love so much deserves a chance i mean there in the beginning nana couldn't even see them and so she's come back into the picture and, and every week that they come, the girls are just, ex you know, there in the beginning, there was a little crying, but they're over that now. They know their mom and Nana can come when they want to. All they have to do is come and say, hey, can we come tonight or whatever? And I'm like, yeah, we're not doing nothing, sure, come on. Um, and they love that. And they're okay when Nana and mom leaves. Have you had any, um throughout this process had any major challenges or any setbacks or anything that you um, maybe thought, gosh, I wish I had uh, known this before I did? Well, I can just share an experience real quick. Um, she, she came to me about a week before the sister came. And as we went along, there was a power struggle because the last home that was at um, they kind of just let her do whatever she wanted to. She was her own boss at five years old and she could come in and she could do her own food. I mean, I think at this house she was having to do her own stuff. So she was used to that. But when she got under me, you know, and the rules started coming in, it, it was, it, it tended to be a little power struggle, but we worked through that. We worked through that. Um, you, you, you still have to put the rules out there, okay? Doesn't mean you have to um, keep them. You can always change them. Again, you got to learn their personalities and what their little ticks are and how that works and all of that. So that's, and I had a real problem with her her first year at school over here. Um, she wanted to do what she wanted to do in the teacher's classroom and, and we had to have talk with the teacher. So once she finally got, you know, kids look, they need structure. They need to know that there's consequences for their actions if they're misbehaving. And I think that's what we have learned. And we're still learning that. Um, so, yeah, sometimes they can come with a power struggle, but you keep working on those till they, and it'll finally click, you know. Oh, I'm going to be in trouble if I do this, you know. Oh, if I do this. And she'll be like that. She loves her little tablet, and I don't mind them playing on that at all. But that's one thing I'll take away if there's something going on. And 
say, Grandma, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to lose my tablet. And I said, okay, well, you you know, we, we got to do what we got to do to enable for you to be to playing on that for your time on your tablet. So it's it's there. It's there. So being, being flexible, I think it sounds like you're saying is, um, you know, having some rules, but also being flexible to adapt those rules based on the child and who's in your home and um, what makes them. Yes. Hi everyone, with 12,000 children in the foster care system, we are in need of safe, supportive, and loving families for children more than ever. Today, we're gonna to bust five myths about children that are in foster care. Myth number one, you have to have a lot of money to foster. Fact, you don't have to have a lot of money to be a foster parent. We just wanna make sure that you and your family are financially stable. Myth number two, you have to be married to be a foster parent. Fact, foster parents can be married or single, male or female. Myth number three, when I foster a child, I'm on my own without any help. Fact, you are not alone as a foster parent. You have helpful agency staff here with CHS, as well as training to help prepare you for children coming into your home. Myth number four, I can't be a foster parent. I get too attached when they leave. Fact, the truth is, yes, as a foster parent, you may get attached but you have the opportunity as a foster parent to make a lasting difference in a child's life, no matter how long or short you are in their lives. Myth number five, children in foster care aren't great kids. Fact, children in foster care are amazing kids. True, they have been through challenging, painful experiences, but with families like you who give them a loving, supportive environment, they can thrive. So now that you know the facts, I invite you to go to our website, CHS, nc.org slash foster to learn more about how you can be the difference in the life of a child. So Donna, if somebody is kind of maybe a little leery about coming into this world of foster care and adoption, um, maybe because of shared parenting, that's something that's scary to them. Um, what would be your advice to that person? just because they're not with mom or their dad or whatever, it, it doesn't mean that you can't get along with them. Yes, I understand that people have problems. Yes, I understand that sometimes drugs are those problems. But, you know, it's up to them to get their help. The most important thing is what the, what the judge and DSS and everybody wants for that child, okay? I chose the road to share, to do shared parenting. I still, I do care about their mama. It's their mama. Um, everybody may not feel that way, um, but you can always certainly talk to them, talk things out. And I think that's the way it should be done. Sounds like you're doing a, a great job of shared parenting. I love hear, to hear that. Um, I'm very grateful that you have yes. that perspective. I think it's, it, it's really difficult for some folks to wrap you their know minds what, around that. Yeah. It, it is and you just have a different perspective when you're going through school and you you know you're going through classes and you're talking about the shared parent and some people say well i really won't don't want nothing to do with them if, if this is going on or that's going on hey they're always trying to fix their life okay you have to give them a chance um and that's the way i look at it people deserve chances Absolutely. That's a great perspective. Okay. What do you think, what qualities do you think make a good foster family? Well, I think you should be good people and um, it's the desire to help a kid out that's in need. Yeah. It's not all bed of roses, but the joy they bring to your life, it says it all. It says it all. You know, some of them come with problems. 
my 12 year old that I have right now, you know, we're doing therapeutic stuff with her and uh, some of them come with problems, but I'll tell you what, there is a long line of people who will help you get through to the kids that you have, whether it be your therapist, whether it be your CHS workers, DSS, um, I, I call them all if I have a problem. My little 12 year old, she will, she wanted to give me a trouble back before Christmas about school and not wanting to do it. And so everybody got involved. They're my support system. You know what? Everybody needs to know there is a support system for your foster children. If you're having, you know, issues. Mm -hmm. And I think the classes that you guys give, CHS gives, are, they're fantastic. I have loved every single one of them. And every different person that I meet from CHS, CHS they're great. They just have the best, uh, uh, you know, their knowledge and, um, you know, things that they themselves have been gone through. Um, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I love my support system that I have. I can pick up the phone anytime, any anytime. At anywhere and call them and say, hey, look, um, I need to talk to you. What do you think we should do about this? Or, you know, if I'm just not sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just um, encourage people who are wanting to get into fostering that it's very rewarding. It's very rewarding. I love it. Well, Donna, thank you again so much for sharing your story. Um, we really appreciate it. You're welcome. Also, yeah, it's very informative. I think, um, you know, I think it'll, I hope it will inspire a lot of families to take that next yeah. step. Um, and if mm -hmm. any of you guys have any questions um, while you're listening to this tonight, um, please know that we've got somebody here to answer those questions um, for you. And if you are ready to take that next step and um, want to go ahead and apply to become a foster or adoptive parent, you can do that on our website. It's chsnc.org um, backslash apply. Thanks again for joining us tonight um, and we'll see you next time on Family Talks.